Welcome to the Made for Agriculture podcast with Adam, Cameron, and Emily. Today's hosts are Adam Jones and Cameron Horan. All right, folks, welcome to another episode of the Made for Agriculture podcast. We've got our in-season podcast team here along with Cameron. How are we doing this morning, Cameron? Good. How are you, Adam? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's raining outside, uh, and the consensus this morning is that's either good or bad. So we'll let our uh, regional agronomists uh, uh, provide their definition for that. I think we want to start this morning and kind of go around the horn by crop. So um, uh, guys said that they wanted to start with wheat and some things going on in the wheat crop. Uh, so I guess we'll go to Shannon for starting that conversation. Yeah, good morning, guys. So wheat's uh, wheat kind of slowed down a little bit with the cooler temperatures. Um, we, had, we actually had a, a light freeze Monday morning, Sunday night. Um, and that's been ever since about mid last week, it's been in the 50s and 60s and growth's really slowed down. Um, but, you know, as we've been talking over the last few weeks, that's prime weather, prime weather for stripe rust. And we consistently started seeing it in the fields this week. Um, hard wheat, soft wheat, you name it. Um, you don't have to check a field very long and we start we start finding the disease. Um, so fungicide timing now becomes now becomes topic um, when we're going to put fungicide on either whether, is it going to be a flag leaf fungicide or a um, flowering fungicide application and really a lot of our wheat ranges from um, late boot early head emergence to um, starting to flower um, really the wheat crop this year is is pretty uneven um, it, un, and uneven in the field which is making this application timing um, kind of difficult so historically you know our old trizol uh flowering fungicides we had to wait till about 50 to 60 50 to 60 percent flowering um, before we made those applications and then a few years ago we had products like mirror Vasace come on board um still a trizol but also has the addition of an S sdhi that allows for a little bit wider window um so now we're able to if we're using a product like mirror Vasace, we're able to put the app the fungicide on you know 50 percent heading across the field so which that's essentially going to give us the same coverage as what the old presaros the old carambas would give us with that 50 to 60 percent flowering um so when we're out looking at the field right now what we're seeing is we have some plants that are 100 percent headed we've got some plants that are 50 percent headed and we got some plants that haven't even started heading yet all in the same field and so we have to take that into account whenever we're trying to make this decision of when to put our fungicide on. Um, I don't know that we've covered fusarium head blight a whole lot, but fusarium head blight is um, commonly known as head scab, um, leads to vomitoxin, poor grain quality. Um, we haven't really had a bad year for a few years, so uh, it's something that's kind of on our radar, especially with the weather. We mentioned it's raining right now. Um, moisture during flowering um, is kind of our key environment for the disease to pop up. And fusarium is the pathogen, which fusarium um, overwinters in our fields. Um, in my part of the world, we have a lot of wheat behind corn stalks. And fusarium is the same, the same disease that impacts corn. Um, so if we are following corn stalks for no-till or minimal till, there's no doubt that we have fusarium in our fields. So with that and with the rain we've had over the, the next few days, um, definitely definitely on the radar. We we actually started putting on uh, some fungicide just before the rain on Wednesday, and that covered a lot of that wheat that was early. We'll be uh, we'll be finishing up applications Monday. We should have more wheat that's more headed out, not quite flowering. So I, we're kind of in this in between time right now, which doesn't have me a whole lot worried, but there is definitely potential of fusarium head blight popping up now with with these rains gotcha no that's that's good information scott kevin jesse you guys want to add in anything that you guys have found wheat wise in your area i know it's not as much of a major crop as it is for shannon but there's still some out there so i i did have a consultant uh, megan atkins in northeast missouri did find um stripe rust yesterday so now she just found it on one plant and not something that was, you know, throughout an entire field or causing a lot of damage yet, but definitely something we're going to have to keep watching for in the north even. Um, there have been some other leaf diseases um, like tan spot, uh, septoria, but we're, 
kind of the end of the boot stage now and we have a lot of heads that are going to be poking out pretty soon and i i i think um head scab's going to be a probably the it generally is a bigger concern up north um so we'll probably see a lot of that uh, a lot of our fungicide applications um focusing on head scab we're kind of towards the towards the tail end of being able to um hit that leaf disease timing just right for for those diseases so i i feel like we'll probably see most of those applications for um, head scab up this way um not not a lot to add um i guess good morning everybody uh, not a lot to add from what the other guy said i guess for for us we've we found some stripe rust on the west side of of the uh, central region um but knowing that kevin found it up in marion county it's it's seems pretty safe to say that we've we've got it throughout the the region whether it's been detected or not uh we are finally getting a little bit of rain um only a couple tenths so far in the mexico area but it looks like there's maybe some more behind it and uh just kind of assuming that the dry weather so far is, has kept it up kept it from showing up in a lot of places so uh we obviously now have the moisture and we have the have the temperatures so uh we'll be being even in more diligent than we've had than we've been um the only other thing i'd add uh, we have i've been asked a lot about insecticides and and i haven't i haven't been uh we haven't seen a lot to warrant that so far um you know there's some aphids out there but you know at this point in time not really numbers that would affect the plants just by you know the what they do to the plants as far as feeding um you know it's a little late in the game to be too concerned about the disease you know vector aspect of, of aphids but we are had a lot of pictures of army worms sent to me this week we've been getting the getting the updates um had uh, had a picture sent to me yesterday from out out west um north of adrian uh, of a pasture you know wiped out by by army worms so we've still got a little bit of time um between the like shannon said everything kind of slowed down it when it cooled off um maybe tail in the next week we'll be making applications um, some little bit sooner if the weather straightens out um so we have a few days to make the call but there may be there may be reason to to put an insecticide in simply because we're worried about army worms um they're, they're tough to track you know in this kind of a situation because they just seem to kind of pop up here and there and um all of a sudden you know you had grass one day and a couple of days later you notice it's it's gone um so obviously the fields that we're scouting you know they're still sweeping them and sweeping uh, the fields and uh, you know hopefully can pick up on that but uh, that would be the thing that that i'd add to the whole wheat fungicide situation i don't have much to add we're still not seeing those stripe rust down here but we're a little bit ahead of everybody else uh we hadn't this week's been cool but last week we had like six days of 85 degree weather and our wheat really come on like shannon we thought we were going to be uneven but after all those warm days and our wheat all kind of evened up and shoot, we were putting fungicide on last week and we're kind of on the tail end of ours now. So I'd say us seeing stripe rust slim to none. All right. Sounds good. Anybody else have anything to add on wheat? Otherwise, let's move on and uh, kind of talk corn and soybeans. Um, Kevin, why don't we start with you kind of on that discussion? I know. Um, progress since we talked last uh, a couple weeks ago has kind of been been spotty probably more in more in central in scott's territory as far as planting goes but uh but there has been some going on for sure so let's talk a little bit on corn and soybeans and what to watch out for sure so our after we recorded our last podcast we had uh oh probably about two or three more good um days of planting and it has rained ever since throughout much of the north region there's there has been some spots where um it has you know it has dried up um here and there to to, to get some more um crop in the ground and uh and we have everything has stayed pretty fairly solid up until now to where i, th I think most of our locations have Done a done, been able to do considering all all the rain been able to do a pretty good job of keeping up with spring, um, but it has just been a little little wet to continue planting in a lot of a lot of places. But 
um, with with a lot of corn being um, being in the ground for two weeks, we've got um, got a lot of corn popping up, um, and we are seeing some cutworms. Um, you know, due to that, we're we we always do recommend adding an insecticide with that herbicide application to you know prevent those prevent those um, you know in fields that aren't um, sprayed yet. We're we're still recommending that, um, you know, especially now that we're seeing um, cutworm feeding on this little corn that's popping up. Um, you know, with with cutworms, they can they can just cause stand loss so quickly. So it's it's one of those insects that we um, we recommend a you know a preventative preventative measures on just because we um, it's it's just so hard to keep up with them. They can cause a lot of damage really fast. So so that's something we've been keeping our eye out on on with on corn um you know it, during that uh busy period there were set a handful of soybeans planted um we we don't have a lot of soybeans popping up yet i've, I've got re reports of a few few fields just kind of starting to emerge but there had uh most most any soybeans in the in the ground up north are still still underground big majority of them will be so um you know we're always recommending putting those and we talked about this a couple weeks ago um recommending especially planting early and just for this reason to have uh have those seed treatments on to protect that uh protect that seed especially if it's going to take a, a couple weeks to come up um protect against all those diseases any early season insects and all and all those things so so far it looks like our treatments are are doing pretty well we're, we're not getting a whole lot of reports yet of um you know any any diseases happening underground um i think everything seems to be holding up to this point not not a lot different probably in central um quite a bit of the corn has been planted at this point um got some pretty good stands from a lot of uh, what we're seeing across the the region there there are areas where uh, we are still watching um emergence in some fields and um you know i think this rain's gonna kind of push it one way or the other you know we'll know know something here pretty quick um didn't really you know didn't see a true what i would call crusting on some fields but but there were just some really tight soils and you know just i think combination of of some where a few places did get some hard rains right after planting and then you know the cool weather and just a lot of things have have, have been tough on a few of these tans so um i'm suspecting we will have a few replants here and there just from from what i'm seeing and i've got some fields to look at next week um but overall um getting pretty decent reports like kevin said uh, cutworms are out there um we've been talking about those um you know it's been a long time i mean a lot of our corn is traded um to where you know we do have bt um that that will work on a lot of a lot of the uh the cutworms uh, but they still have to feed on it um so as far as getting those you know, you look, you have a corn stand one day and, and it's wiped out the, a day later, like we used to see. Um, I mean, I remember years ago when I was still in college spraying over at Ladonia and, you know, told to get in early next morning, we have cutworms to spray. And I come racing and, you know, whatever, five in the morning, I'm loading up water and and assistant manager comes over and says, I ah, cool, cool, cool off. He, he said, it's gone. <laughs> you know, we should have sprayed it in the dark last night. Um, you know, just, you don't hear that stuff anymore, but, but you do you know two or three thousand plants out of your stand is is very very common and i just you know for what we do to to put that crop in and all of the things we've done to these planters to just perfect seed drop and spacing and you know we've tried to really play and get our populations you know right where they need to be field by field and 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 then we let something go out and chew on two three four thousand of them um that's that's more what we see and, and we are seeing that this year so you know, if you haven't sprayed yet, you know, definitely throw that pyrethroid in and, and just, just eliminate that issue. Um, on the, on the soybean side, um, we're kind of, again, like, kind of like Kevin, we've, we've got some emergence, um, hearing, hearing of some decent counts in places, but a lot of, a lot of them are, are just, uh, too far ahead. Um, I did, uh, you know, got some pictures sent to me yesterday and some fields I need to look at next week. Uh, looks like we do have, you know, a few places with some of the damping off, you know, uh, diseases appears to be, um, need to get some stuff into the lab to see exactly what we're dealing with. But, uh, uh, again, I think some of these, these cool temperatures and maybe just some tougher, 
tougher planting conditions that uh, are leading to some emergence issues in those fields. Um, say the big thing has been just some a lot of beans got put in the ground really fast um, in some areas, and and you know I know some guys have just been racing to try to get down you know the uh, you know the authorities and valors and tendovos and you know boundaries and just all the stuff that has to be up before emergence for you know very important for our water hemp uh, control and uh, boy these winds have have made it tough but you know there's still been quite a quite a bit of crop protection put to the ground and and just kind of a kind of a race to get that on before they pop through so that's all i got on that sounds good shannon jesse you guys probably have a more advanced crop down there i'll let you guys jump in and talk about that so actually i don't know if ours is more advanced um we're we're all but done planting corn um why i said at least 95 percent done if not a little bit higher corns v we've got some v1 corn um but there was a lot of corn that was put in just before this rain. So like Scott said, this rain is going to make it kind of, it's either going to come up and it's going to be perfect stands or we're going to have some replant here. It all depends on how much it rains and how long the water sets on the field, of course. Um, there have been a few reports of cutworms as well, following a lot of precautions that that Kevin and Scott mentioned there on protecting from there. Bean-wise, um, we've got a few beans in the ground, but not nearly as much as what they, they tend to do up north. Um, as of this week, I think they were just starting to pop out of the ground. Um, there was a little bit. Well, one of the concerns was that freeze on Sunday, on Sunday night, Monday morning. Um, you know, we, are those beans viable after after a freeze like that? We didn't quite get down to. We got right. We touched right at 32. Um, and kind of what my rule of thumb is: as long as we're kind of in that cotyledon stage, we have a little bit higher tolerance than we would if the trifoliates were out on soybeans. But that growing point's at the top of the plant. So anytime that plant emerges, that growing point's up there. So really, it's going to come down to, you know, how long was it that cold? How cold did it actually get? And did that growing, growing point get damaged? So typical of most freeze damage topics, when we talk about any crop, we have to give it a few days, reevaluate, uh, see if there's any new growth, see if, see, see if stand was impacted, and we'll make that replant decision. That'll likely be a conversation around first to next week. For us, we're just, we are, we're a lot further down the road. I'm going to say we go back to, like I said earlier, two weeks ago, we had a stretch of six days that was 85 degrees, and that really brought a lot of crop out of the ground. Uh, for the corn, especially the southern part, I'm going to say we're 100% done. I'm going to say 95% of that's out of the ground. Uh, I was down around Kennett and some of that sand stuff that was planted late March, and I mean, shoot, some of that corn's already V4, V5, and they're top dressing it. Uh, some of our March planted beans are first trifoliate with the second trifoliate coming out, and they've been posting them with herbicides. So that 85 degree weather really brought a lot of our stuff around. Uh, now, when we we had a frost Monday morning, but we only got down to like 35. So I'm you can see it ding stuff, but it ain't it didn't hurt it by no means. But that really brought a halt to the growing. We had in like three days of zero growing degrees. Uh, but now we're supposed to get back up in the 80s and a lot of this crop will turn around now, especially our corn and beans. Now the northern half, they're a little bit further behind us. I'm going to say there's 60, 70 percent planted on corn and maybe 50 percent planted on beans. But a chunk of those are out of the ground too. So the biggest deal is just uh, controlling what you got. Like Scott said, I mean, in the past two weeks, I bet we've probably had three really good days of spraying, just the wind blowing. Now there's been a lot more sprayers running in a lot more of those days. Uh, I don't want to get on drift complaints or nothing like that, but there's been a lot of gossip around for the people who were spraying in the 25 mile an hour winds, but just just kind of a make sure you're paying a little bit of attention and not just let emotion take over and just go spraying a bunch of stuff. Because uh, there's a lot of crop out of the ground for us. Uh, we do have cutworms. One thing I wanted to add is we got some guys around the ethos in furrow, and it's I was kind of worried about that controlling our cutworms good enough but it seems to where it's getting most of them and we're not losing a whole lot of stands. So that's just something else to think about. If you want to run something in furrow versus putting a pyrethroid with your prees. Uh, besides that, that's all I've got on corn and beans, really. If anybody's got anything else before I start talking about my other two crops that nobody else has. 
No, that's great. I mean, that's interesting stuff to to most folks, Jesse. So, yeah, nobody's got anything else on corn and soybeans. I'd say go for it. Okay. I'll start out with the rice. Uh, the majority of the rice is planted, I'm going to say 99, 95% of it. The biggest struggle is with our rains. You've either been getting rain, good rains once a week, or you ain't been getting nothing. Uh, so with rice, we don't normally talk about it in April, but we start losing rain, our herbicides do not work as well because our barnyard grass and stuff like that germinate in that top half inch. And once it gets dry, even though you got moisture there for even the grass to be growing, your grasses and stuff like that, your weeds aren't growing. So they kind of get stressed and the chemical just doesn't work very well. We need moisture to get them work. And we've, we've been struggling with that. And some of the rains, we got uneven rice stands. So we have rice at two leaf and some that's just germinated. So then trying to play the game of, well, what can I actually spray on it and not hurt it and this, that, and the other. And it's just been, it's been a struggle for guys. It's just the start of last year all over again. So we're hoping we got more rain coming. If we can get a couple of good rains here now, we can kind of make up for a lot of this and get our wheat fields cleaned back up and go forward. Uh, with the cotton, there was actually, we had an insight podcast since then, but I didn't realize there was a lot of cotton planted in the first April, which is not heard of for us normally, but it was warm. There's cotton up, uh, herbicides going out on it, but most of it started going in this week and it'll be up next week. So it's just been, you drive around and there's just a lot of crop up. Like I said earlier, it's kind of impressing that the Southern half of our territory, there's going to be 80% of the crop out of the ground before we hit the first of May. Jesse, um, any major acreage swings down there? That's one thing I was going to ask you about. I know that, you know, for a while there, kind of rice didn't participate in some of that uh, market upswing that some of the corn and stuff <clears throat> did in the past couple of years. And so I think acres have kind of fluctuated there a little bit. But um, but I know maybe there was some things going on this year. Any thoughts there on, on what you're seeing from a... Yeah, actually there was in the rice... A deal. There was a there was a big deal. I hadn't really talked about it because it doesn't influence a lot of people. But uh, I think I forgot. I was listening to Jared Jared Harkey last week, and just Arkansas in itself is up by like three hundred thousand acres. It's their biggest rice year since like two thousand seventeen. And with Rice Tech and Horizon Ag, and then the University varieties, they're always two years behind us on seed production. So they were not forecasting this big jump on rice acres and then they had some weather events last year in texas where we didn't get as much seed produced so actually there was zero replant seed this year because they sold everything and guys were still wanting more rice so that was something normally rice goes out early because it can, can tolerate some cooler wet weather but a lot of guys waited to plant just because we knew there was no replant seed to be having so there was kind of and there's a lot of guys that normally do one or two technologies that are running three different technologies scattered out all over the place just because they couldn't get the seed they wanted. So that's been a big deal. So yeah, to answer your question, rice acres are way up. Gotcha. Yeah. I wondered if with kind of the downturn in, in some of the corn and soybean market situations that some of those other crops wouldn't, wouldn't see a jump in acres. Sounds like that's what you're seeing. So gotcha. Any other updates that we need to cover guys for this week? The only thing I was going to mention, um, like Shannon and Scott, they kind of already touched on it, is, you know, we talked about last week in our po last time we had a podcast about we were looking at a dip in cooler weathers, and we talked about how we had some frost in some areas um, from that since we recorded our last podcast. Um, I've had some talks of some replants being turned in from some frost damage, um, and I've kind of just, I've, I've told them that, you know, you need to make sure you evaluate, evaluate that. Don't just just because you had a frost instantly go and think you need to have a replant at that moment, you need to give it a chance to evaluate, especially on corn with that growing points under the ground. Um, sometimes you just have leaf damage. It's not actually going to have an impact. It just doesn't look pretty. So I um, just wanted to touch on that. Shannon um, touched on that on beans already as well. So. Yeah, we had a little bit of that. Um, I didn't I didn't even mention it. Um, you know, I think all that corn will be fine. The beans, we're just going to, like you said, going to have to evaluate it. Um, 
I did not get any calls about any wheat. I guess I looked at one field where there was con some concern and, and I didn't see anything. Um, but it may have been a little soon too. So, um, the other thing I was going to bring up, there are still a ton of weevil out in the alfalfa. Um, I, I looked at a field yesterday where they, they had thought something that actually killed the crop and we're already making plans. And I think it's simply weevil. Um, they were, they're just, when you found any surviving alfalfa, it was just loaded. Um, so they are still out there. Um, some fields that have been treated, um, but everybody's talking about the slow growth. Um, same thing. And alfalfa is just kind of sitting there and, and some of them that have been treated, you know, have them back in there again. Um, Dave Moore, our uh, range and pasture specialist, I was talking to him yesterday and he, he said he thinks it's the worst weevil year he's ever seen. So, you know, if, you, if you've still got some some patches that have that have not been treated, I mean, get out and look at them. Uh, I already talked about the army worm thing, and that can also be a, be a deal in alfalfa, but obviously just in grass in general. Um, you know, this this might sound kind of silly, but I think I think every every cow guy, every grass guy, or whatever, you don't have to get a fancy one, an expensive one like we use when we're sweeping soybeans and and all that. But I mean, just a twenty dollar sweep net thrown on the back of the truck. Um, you know, we all look silly when we're out there using them, but you cannot find insects without sweeping them you know to really do a good job you know there's things you can do if you don't have one today and you need to check you know very gently clip a plant if you got a best best thing to have is a white pickup and go out there and you know bang them on the hood of your truck and see what falls out or lay something out in the field and and you know kind of brush them into that but but really just a just a 20 dollars sweep net can save so much when you're out checking cows or you're out just driving through a pasture stop for just a second sweep it you know, army worm and, and weevil is pretty easy to identify. Um, you can also see what else is going out there. Um, I guess the only other thing, you know, oddball stuff this week, I started getting some calls yesterday about slugs showing up in some soybeans behind the cover crop. That's something we see every every so many years. And I think cool temps kind of slowing down the beans and then the rain we're getting, um, you know, that could be a little more of an issue. Uh, usually they usually they outgrow it and, and just kind of make things ugly and maybe thin the stand a little bit, but every now and again, we have, we have fields that, you know, have replant issues because of that as well, but that's all I got. Sounds good. Well, if nobody has anything else super pressing, um, I think we'll, we'll end this one today. I appreciate all you guys' time this morning, uh, providing some updates and appreciate everybody's time listening. We'll see you next episode. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. See you guys.